Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how I did this pastel drawing of Fred the Yellow Labrador. This portrait is going to be a perfect demonstration on how to select the colours. Now this was taken on a beach, it was a strong light source from one side and it was a very warm light source on the right hand side. But what that meant is on the left hand side the colours were significantly cooler. So this is a really good portrait to demonstrate how I like to select my colours and it is all down to whether or not it is a warm colour or a cool colour. Now before I focus on any type of colour selection with my pastel pencils, I will always put in a really good base foundation first. Now that doesn't mean that I'm going in with a thick layer of pastel, as you can see here it's very thin, you can still see that dark grey pastel matte paper showing through. But I want to make sure that my base layers are really soft and blended. If I have any harsh lines at the base layer stage, it is significantly harder to get smoother transitions when we come to put the details in with the fur. Even if you look at where the ear joins onto the side of the face, it's not a really harsh, solid line. I can reinforce that with my pastel pencils if I need to later on. But I do certainly find that any harsh edges between the lights and the darks at the very first layer really does make it a lot harder to make that nice soft gradual fur transition with certain type of fur textures particularly the shorter coated dogs like the labrador if i did have those harsh start and stop points i'm not going to be able to get these lovely soft transitions where you've got that slightly darker color under the eye that rolls off to the left hand side where the fur gets lighter so if you're working on any portrait i can't even think of one example where i've got harsh lines for the first base layer that that would be my first tip get your base layer nice and soft now from there you can see that i'm reinforcing my darker colors but the colors that i'm starting to use in some of the shadowed areas particularly next to the ear they are more cooler on the color wheel look at some of the grays that i'm using and those darker grays all of those do contain a bluer tint to it now with any pastel pencil set that you use you will have a variety between warm grays and cool grays and this is how I split up those two colours. I'm not really focusing on what's neutral in the middle when I've got a light source like this. If I've got one side of the face that's cooler and you can see a lot more blues and purples, I want to make sure that I'm capturing that in that fur. Now when we get across to the right hand side, you're going to see the real difference. I don't use any of my bluer greys there at all. Now light source is crucial. Just look at the eyes here for example. The highlight on this eye that I'm currently working on is brighter than the highlight on the left eye. That's all going to help to piece together that light source when the portrait is finished. And the base layer process is the same but look at the difference. My base layer colours here are now more of the creamer colours and some warmer browns. No greys, no blues, none of those cooler colours at all. Now it's not often that I get a reference photo that has such a sharp contrast between the colours from one side of the face to the other. However, it can create a really striking portrait. So the biggest tip throughout any part of the portrait when you are working on something similar is do make sure that you've got those right colours in the places that is required. Just because you've got those bluer pencils on the left hand side of the face doesn't always necessarily mean that they should be used all over the dog. That will then change the light source and the overall feel and depth within the piece. Now here what I'm starting to do is a layer of refinement. Now I didn't have to do that so much on the left hand side because the dark grey pastel matte paper was actually providing that slightly cooler colour for me. Whereas on the right hand side I did want to make sure that I added in some very subtle browner type of colours before I started adding in my details. After I did that, that's when I'm going to start to piece the two sections of the face together with this one area in between the eyes. You'll notice that I've got that cooler grey in between there, but I'm starting to layer some of my warmer highlights on top. This is going to be very subjective to the reference photo that you are working on. There may not always be this cooler section in between the eyes, but if it is, as always, as I've mentioned, it's really important to get that in place. What I don't want is to have a lot of depth on the left hand side and the right hand side and the middle of the face not matching up to the two other areas. So it's really important with each element that you're working on that it is given the amount of time for each section to get it up to the same level. Don't look at a portrait and think well that bit doesn't contain as much detail or colour so therefore it's not as important. What will happen is that one section will bring down the whole portrait once it's nearer to completion. 
Something else that's really important as well, look at that darker marking in between the eyes, how it almost looks like it goes up into a diamond shape and a point in the middle. The way that that stops and how high up on the head that goes is really important because if I was to make that darker mark in higher, I'm going to make his forehead look a lot taller and obviously then his head would just look slightly different to what you can see in the reference photo. So all of these things are really crucial at this stage. Always cross-reference your own line art, your own drawing as you're going with other elements in the portrait. Now what I will do there is I will think, right, so from the top of that point and that darker marking in the middle of the face, if I then did a straight line with a ruler down towards the top slope of the left hand side of the eye, that there should be a straight diagonal line. So those are the sorts of things that I will check within my own work throughout the drawing process. And the reason why I do that is because it is really important to get these lights and the darks in the right place because these are determined by the underlying bone and muscular structure. These shadows and highlights are not random. So after I've completed this nose here, I'm gradually building up my layers, working from dark to light. I've got those lovely dark brown colours in to start with. Now I've got a couple of videos here on YouTube of various dog noses. Obviously here being a yellow Labrador, he has more of a redder brown type of nose rather than the black. So I really want to make sure that I've captured those colours here as well. You'll also notice that I am working in small sections. Now for me, this is a really important part of the process. I do find I'm far more motivated when I do break a portrait up like this. If I work in one set layer and do one base layer for the entire face and then my second layer and so on, I do find that I spend more time staring at my reference photo than actually drawing. It is purely because we're trying to focus on such a large area, we don't really know where to start. So if you're someone who does find that happens, just break it down, only focus on two or three square inches at one time, don't look at anything else, work on that, get it about 80% complete and then you can move on to the next element. And really before you know it, you've actually got a lot more of the portrait done than you would have done going with the other approach. So this portrait here was a 10 by 10 inch, so it's not massive, you can see that by the size of my hand compared to the dog's face. So I have to be realistic with how much tiny detail I can get in the fur. Now that being said, I can still indicate at the fur direction. Look at how I'm working on the fur here as it starts to slope over to the cheek area. They're not straight lines. Every single detail I draw has a slight curve about it. It is not horizontal and they're certainly not vertical. So it's really important to make sure that you study that fur direction. Now I have a video here on YouTube and it's my top tips for drawing realistic fur. I will link all of these in the description below if they're of interest. Now one of the top tips there is your fur direction, fur thickness and fur length. These are all really going to make or break a portrait. If the fur length is too long I'm going to make him look like he's a long coated Labrador which obviously is not even a thing. So we need to make sure that we've got that fur texture and by that I mean our pencil lengths, the right the right um, variation from what we can see in that reference photo. So for instance, my pencil strokes that I'm working on here on the muzzle, as you can see, are significantly shorter. They're barely, you know, just over a millimetre long. They're not dots, they are still actual pencil strokes, but they are not as long as the fur on the side of the cheeks. There is a very big difference there. So I have to make sure that I've captured that in my drawing because that again is going to help with that 3D shape of the face. Now another thing, as I say, and I speak about this on all of the tutorials, is your warm and your cool colours. The tongue here is another prime example. The part of the tongue here that's hanging over the canine tooth on the left, yes, it does contain some pinks and reds, but I went over the top with more of my more paler purples and neutral colours. And now when I'm starting to build up this section on the right-hand side of the tongue, notice how I've used a lot more of my oranges with my reds. Now this here is already indicating at that warm sided light source from the right hand side. Once we've got all of this portrait in place, these two areas here are all going to tie in with the rest of the fur. Now if colour selection is something that you do find particularly challenging or there's any part of the drawing process that you're not quite sure about, I do have a lot of real time tutorials available on my Patreon channel. They really do focus on all of these elements and so much more. So because they're significantly slower footage, I'm able to exactly explain, explain why I'm using that colour, why I'm doing that layering process, 
why I'm holding that pencil in a specific way, even down to when I've got a sharper lead compared to a blunter lead. All of these decisions I make are all based on the type of pencil stroke for that fur texture that I'm trying to create. And I do have a mixture of wildlife and domestic pets there. But because I want to be able to potentially help out with other artists who might want to do pet portraits themselves and take on commissions, I really do focus a lot on the pet portrait side of things. So there's an awful lot of dog breeds, there's some cats there and horses. So if my slower in-depth tutorials in pastels or acrylics are of interest, I will link my Patreon channel in the description below. So alongside focusing on the colours that I'm using here, I'm also focusing on my contrast. Now this is something again that I think is really, really important, even more important than the colour selection. The reason being, look at how dark, now I've zoomed out here, look at how dark my shadows are around the eyes, the inside of the mouth and the gum area. These are really dark. That's automatically making the fur on the right hand side look brighter. And this is one of the common questions that I'm asked is, why doesn't the fur have the same amount of depth or why doesn't it have as much of that punchier impact that I want when I'm first looking at it? And most of the time that's going to be because the contrasts aren't right. If your darker areas look a little bit greyer, it's not going to have the same depth within that entire piece. So if you want to get this in your artwork, make sure that your darks are really dark and then make sure that your highlights next to it are also as bright as what's required. And in the video I've got here on YouTube that top tips for drawing realistic fur, I show you a side by side comparison of a cavalier portrait that I did where you've got one version that is the exact drawing how I have shown in the tutorial that's on Patreon and then the other one where the contrast has been reduced but I haven't adjusted the color at all and that just shows you there the massive difference that focusing on the contrast will have in that final piece. Now that being said although yes you do want good contrast throughout you need to really focus on how much contrast you need in that fur and what I mean by that is take the chest fur here he, has, he is on the beach, he's obviously had a swim. So this fur here is wet, it's clumped together. I need to make sure that this has got a different texture than what I've currently drawn on the face. And ultimately that's going to stem from the not only the, the pencil strokes, the fur length, how the fur is clumped together, but most importantly the contrast. You'll notice that I'm adding in more shadows between the clumps of fur, far darker than I have on the face. That's going to help to hype up the contrast in this one area to make this fur look wet. If I didn't have the shadows in between these curls and the clumps of fur as dark as what I currently have here, this fur is not going to look wet. So that's just another thing to really look at closely in that reference photo. Where exactly do you need to hype up that contrast and where do you need to dull it down slightly? So here is a photo of Fred's finished portrait. You can really see those warmer colours more on the right hand side and then those lovely bluer values on the left side. So I really hope the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video are useful. If they were, I would really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up because it really does help. And if you'd like to get notified of the future content I upload, hit the subscribe and the bell button. And as I've mentioned in the video, if my slower in-depth tutorials are of interest, I'll link my Patreon in the description below. If you've got any art-related questions, pop them in the comments. I'm more than happy to help if I can, and I'll be uploading another video to YouTube next week.